welcome back. Yes, so let's continue our conversation <laughs> on Jesus away from the mother and child conversation. First video, let's look at uh, politics. Yes, uh, just like you know, uh, March, uh, March 18 will be the date for the uh, governorship and um, State House of Assembly election. This no doubt comes with some concerns as um, on the papers today, uh, some seven states were highlighted as flash points that one people should be uh, aware of. Uh, so on the show today, we'll be looking at the issues and concerns uh, that the election has thrown out at us. And to do justice to the segment is the CEO, Connected Development, Hamzat Lawal. Good morning and welcome to News Up. Okay, so we'll wait, um, we'll wait so we can get the, the yeah. network corrected. Uh, so yeah. March 11 is like here. Uh, we went, March 18. Uh, March 18 rather <laughs> yes. is like here. Uh, I think it's still there. When, 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 when INEC extended it by one week, forgive me, for certain reasons I was excited. And um, for me, I just needed that break, um, a weekend to myself. It's been back-to-back -back weekends of work, yeah. and so I was excited. But then... It's here again. It's already here. It's, it's here in the next um, in the next four four days. It will be uh, March 18, and um, Nigerians uh, uh, 28 states will march to uh, the polling units to cast their votes for their yeah. governors and their state House of assembly uh, members. Key election. Some people yeah. think is about the president, the president. But trust me, the sub-national elections are the ones that are closest to the grassroots, that are closest to you and I, and should be the one that we should take a lot, a lot more seriously, if you ask me. So. Absolutely. And we have joined us this morning to do justice to this topic. Uh, Hamzad Lawal, the CEO of Connected Development, he joins us virtually. Hamzad, thank you very much for being part of the program today. Well, thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning to you. Let's just go straight to the point. The governorship election as well as uh, State House of Assembly election will be holding on Saturday. Let's have an overview of what you've been seeing before now and the build up to those elections on Saturday. So Connected Development is an accredited observer by INEC and we deployed 20,000 observers for the presidential and National Assembly elections, and we'll still deploy 20,000 observers for the gubernatorial and state assembly elections um, to to give us real-time situation report across the country where these elections will be holding. Um, what we're seeing is growing concern in deployment of political talks and political talks, particularly in the Northwest, uh, that's in Kano State. Uh, there's also tension in Lagos State because of this very senseless and very sad uh, ethnic politics that has taken over the space. There's also growing concern in the Northeast in terms of uh, security. Uh, but just to also talk a bit about what have we learned with the presidential and national assembly elections. INEC failed to even meet the standard that she set for herself for election management. Um, over 60 percent of polling units materials did not come as at when due which is 8 30 a.m and in some cases election even continued on sunday uh elections results were declared in some states where election did not hold one example is emo state uh so logistically uh INEC failed for the presidential and national assembly elections but when you look at some positive events uh, in terms of the deployment of beavers, which helped check over voting, uh, this this was commendable. When you also look at uh, security, security actually did well, though there were pockets of violence in some cases of insecurity. But by and large, we recorded about 95% uh, of uh, a positive events in terms of security. Um, the IREV itself, uh, you know, did not upload results in, in real time, which was promised by INEC. So, but, but by and large, um, I think INEC have now, um, you know, recognized these gaps uh, and, and have promised that as we go into elections on Saturday, uh, no putting put at the back of our mind that this election is much more important than the previous one, because this is closer to home, this is closer to the grassroots. And we must ensure that we all participate in the process. And I'm really excited about how Nigerians are actually participating and taking ownership of this entire process and value chain. 
look at the, a bit of the concerns that had been raised uh, from the previous election and how Nigerians have dealt with it or are dealing uh, with the concerns that have been raised. Do, do you think that uh, uh, INEC had done well in um, just maybe helping Nigerians uh, regain uh, what some people call lost confidence in the electoral umpire? I think it would take time. Um, before now, INEC was really responsive in providing information and knowledge. Um, INEC was really engaging, and INEC had never enjoyed this level of public support, positive public perception, and even public trust. That's before the presidential and national assembly election. It was really good. INEC was providing real time information and knowledge, countering fake news, misinformation, and disinformation. But at the hour where citizens and civil society had to expect that INEC would rise to the occasion and give us knowledge and information on what was happening with the uh, result upload in real time. And they were mute for, for hours. And then the chairman finally spoke. And what, what he said did not really give public support and uh, did not really galvanize public confidence in their role. But I think that INEC has, and they've acknowledged that yes, there was some challenges with technology and with logistics, and we've already worked uh, to fix these challenges as we go into elections on Saturday. I think it's left for the public to give them benefit of doubt. I can understand that we've given them benefit of doubt and trusted them before now, but I think that because we want Nigeria to prosper, we want Nigeria to make progress, and we want to be part of those success and progress, we must find a way to set aside our grievances and give them uh, another chance to redeem herself on Saturday. And, and hopefully she's able to meet international best practice and international standard in terms of election management. And uh, you, you know, I like your optimism that people would want to, for instance, take uh, INEX uh, coming out, uh, some would say clean, to say, yes, we had some challenges in conducting uh, the February 25th uh, election for the presidency as well as uh, National Assembly, but then we're much ready, much more ready for the elections on Saturday. Um, you mentioned it also a while ago, but is this something that you are concerned around? And I'm referring to the possibility of voter apathy, especially in areas where some political parties thought that uh, they didn't get the kind of results that they deserved during the February 25 election. You know, in an ideal world, um, institutions like INEC would have come public and say, you know what, yes, this election was marred with some level of irregularities. These were the challenges. These were, uh, you know, what went wrong, and this is how we're going to fix it. INEC has been careful, and they've been a bit diplomatic, because right now, if they come public and say, this, you know, this election was marked with irregularities, and this was what went wrong. Uh, some opposition or political party would use that in court against INEC uh, to get some judgment of why this election should be overturned. So I, I can understand why INEC is really careful and don't want to come clean at this instance uh, and uh, allowing the aggrieved party to go to court to seek redress. But I also think that. Um, if you look at the statistics around 26 percent of voter turnout that is not the real uh, that does not capture the real uh population that came out on election day if you see the pictures and the videos clips of millions of people that came out or, or, or during the presidential national assembly elections mind you over 60 percent of the polling unit as captured by connected development deployment um women pregnant women older people that came out to vote were disenfranchised because a lot of them could not wait for hours where in most cases election materials came around 12 p.m or 2 p.m or even uh, 4 p.m even in lube here in abuja they casted their ballot up to 1 30 to uh, midnight so a lot of people who were old women and women that are pregnant had to go back home and they didn't have the strength to come outside so the it, so if you look at it relatively, there were no much voter apathy. It was the irregularity and logistical nightmare of INEC in delivering on her promise that was unable to meet it. And that's why you had that 26% captured. So in the true sense, 
you know, they can question that 26% because it doesn't really reflect the reality of the turnout we had uh, for last election. And I'm confident that on Saturday we even have much more uh, uh, turn, voter turnout uh, for this poll because people now understand that, well, we have to elect the governor who oversees the state poll, who is also the chief implementer, and we have to also elect people from our constituency uh, to make laws for us at the state assembly. All right. Uh, uh, let's look at other key players within uh, this election structure. Uh, if you can hear me, Hamzat, I hope you can still hear me. Uh, here we are discussing INEC, but let's also understand Loud that uh, that INEC is not the only player in this um, uh, coming to, coming election. We have the politicians, we have uh, the people, uh, we have the security agencies. All of these are key components that could uh, make about a good or a, a, a bad election. So let's start with um, uh, the politicians. Let's look at uh, um, activities that have um, played out uh, all through the campaign period leading to the coming elections. Do you think um, politicians have carried themselves well enough that could bring about um, uh, a demonstration of uh, 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 fairness, demonstration of uh, uh, a good player uh, coming the coming election. No, the politicians sadly did not carry themselves well. Look at their public show of shame uh, and pettiness. You know, when they go for campaign, instead of sharing to the Nigerian people their manifest and vision for a better country, they were busy insulting each other on the uh, on the podium. Let's also look at how they interfered with the process and how they wanted to hijack the process. And even on election day, we saw their party agent actually interfering with the work of the um, polling officers in various polling units. So no, before the election and even during the elections, they did not carry themselves well. Even the, the peace uh, agreement that they all signed, they all floated the peace agreement. So um, it's really a shame. And I, you know, before the election, I said everyone was ready for the election. I know security agencies, the electorate, the Nigerian people, but the politicians were not ready for the elections. And and we saw what played out. So no, uh, honestly, they didn't carry themselves well, you know, as politicians and as political leaders. Build up to uh, the presidential election, there were some concerns, peculiar concerns. For instance. It was not too far away from when the new narrow design uh, policy was introduced, which the CBN said, among other things, was aimed at curbing uh, votes buying and corruption generally, and some other you know, uh, reasons why the apex uh, body really said it was pursuing that uh, policy. But now, something changed on Monday. The, the apex bank had come out to say that, uh, well, uh, you can now obey the Supreme Court. Commercial banks go ahead, issue and accept uh, the old Nara notes. Um, one of the excuses given by some voters that didn't go out to vote last time was uh, they had problems getting money. This issue of Nara policy, design policy, would it have any impact on the coming election on Saturday by your own view? In your own view, I beg your pardon. Um, so when you look at this Naira redesign, and also you can't forget to mention the fact that it was well, there was false scarcity. Um, it actually indirectly or directly impacted the previous election, but also we saw where people, uh, how Nigerians remain resilient, and they had to trek hundreds of kilometers. Or we saw where people actually organized themselves and contributed money to buy fuel, uh, to to go and drop people in their various polling units. You know, or where people volunteered and used their own money and fuel to pay for people's public transport to go get the like, uh, you know, to go get um, to go uh, part participate to their civic uh, responsibility. So, it, I I think it would impact, but not significantly, uh, to these elections uh, that are happening on Saturday. I know for a fact that um, even the postponement would impact the election but not significantly because a lot of people who i know who traveled last weekend to cast their ballot on saturday did not return so they remain pute even mr president is still in Dora, you know for whatever reason so uh, i know a lot of people would remain uh you know to cast their ballot on saturday before they they travel back to their place of uh work 
uh, but but you you cannot uh, you know um, we cannot set aside the you know the redesign of the currency uh, and the fuel scarcity that impacted this election. But we don't know to what magnitude because there's no specific data that tells you know what to what magnitude did it impact the election. But it's just exciting to see that Nigerians are truly resilient and remain peacefully and 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 you know engage in this civic um, process. which also was a concern at the presidential election. Um, what do you think could be done differently this time? In as much as we don't clamor for militarization of the process, uh, what do you think could be done differently this time to give us a better, a better result and confidence in terms of um, uh, security of the people and of the ballots? You know, we're facing insecurity in the country because our political leaders are now playing politics with insecurity. You don't play politics with security. When you play politics with security, then you get insecurity. I think that there should be no interference with the security architecture of uh, our state. Uh, you know, around the world, we're pride to to be recognized as one of the best security outfits. You know, where we even deploy our personnel for peacekeeping missions. Well, in our own home and in our backyard, we cannot guarantee security and protection of life and property. But I think it's important that as we go into these elections, we have more food, uh, more boots on the ground, and more rest, rapid response team are closer to this polling unit, particularly the states that have been highlighted as hotspots. You know, we must ensure that there are enough manpower deployed uh, to douse tension and to guarantee safety of life and property so that we can have millions of people come out to cast their ballot. But we cannot allow politicians interfere uh, with security. Let's talk about some peculiarities that will come with the elections on Saturday, especially uh, that for the governorship uh, election, so to speak. Some states have been identified as states to look out for among which, of course, is Lagos, which since uh, the democracy came into being, especially since the president-elect now emerged governor, up until now, a particular uh, political uh, you know, party has held sway. But that didn't reflect during the presidential election as the state lost to uh, a close rival. Uh, many people are worried about what could happen in terms of security and uh, what have you. Um, also, you have other states as Kaduna, where you have uh, Rufai going, and you have other states also that are of interest, or your state is of interest as well. Every state is of interest. But then, what are those peculiar things that, aside the one I've mentioned, um, could characterize the conduct of the election on Saturday, and who and what, who should be on, 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 on his or her feet, and what should be on ground? to forestall, you know, the negative things that could happen and then to ensure that the right things we expect to happen really come to being. You know, Nigeria is already dealing with prolification of small arm. Uh, and this is one of the highest in the sub the sub region. But I think uh, what's important as we go into this election is, you know, Armed talks would be one of the biggest threats of, of, of our democracy. And we see we saw that play out, you know, in Lake states, particularly the presidential election where armed talk came to probably disrupt the election when they know that they're losing uh, you know, the, the polling unit. Uh, we, we also saw this play in some other states around the north central and the northwest. Um I, I think that you know security of lives and property is everyone's business. Uh, intelligent, an intelligent gathering to ensure that a security agency can adequately mobilize to tackle it is really important. Because this data would help inform decision, uh, uh, inform decision making for security personnel. And I think that uh, citizens should uh, also send in information. I know that the Nigerian police have put in hotline. Even the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission have also published uh, toll free hotlines. I think when you hear or when you see something, you should uh, bring this forward uh, to the notice of security agencies. But I also think they have to do better in terms of interrogatory 
and using data uh, and geo-specific data to curb insecurity and, and respond adequately. Uh, you know, Lagos Kano is a state we have to watch out closely for, but also this is the beauty of democracy. Because for me, what this election, what we've learned from this, uh, like it's not a, like strong pool or strong man controlling his state or territory or polling unit. And the, the beavers, what the beavers has also done is checkmate over voting. So without adequate accreditation, you cannot cast your ballot. Uh, uh, but that's why also we must, uh, you know, be on high alert. Because I know a lot of politicians are now desperate and they want to do anything possible within any means necessary and possible to deliver their state and their polling unit on Saturday. And, and to them, they've taken it upon themselves as they do or die activity or do or die event. And, and it's really sad, particularly because with this whole ethnic, religion, and regional sentiment that is playing out in our politics. You know, if it continues, it's going to literally burn each and every one of us. It doesn't matter where you are or where you sit. You know, we cannot be playing tribal and ethnic uh, sentimental politics. You no, know, we, we don't need it in our democracy, and we must call these people out and, and not even amplify it using various media platforms. So I, I, I want to call for calm, but most importantly, let's make it competitive. Let's debate issues because the issues affect you and I. The fact that you know you belong to any ethnic tribe, uh, tribe does not mean you actually have cash, or do you have cash because you belong to an et ethnic uh, group or tribe or from a particular region, or when you go to the petrol station because you're from a particular region or you practice a particular religion, there's a special cue for you to get money and for you to get fuel. So these issues affect each and every one of us. The unemployment affects us, you know, insecurity, uh, you know, power. So I, I think we should focus more on these issues and not allow uh, very selfish politicians divide us uh, so that they can continue to steal our collective uh, uh, wealth. You know, before before now, I would have thought that um, lack of education could have been responsible uh, for certain Nigerians not being able to make informed decisions. But sadly so. You'll be shocked that um, people that are pushing this narrative are well-educated individuals uh, who are primarily deliberately trying to push that narrative to uh, cause some, some segregation within uh, the polity. Well, moving on. Uh, part of the concerns that were raised at the last election was um, the fact that um, some of the INEC um, ad hoc staffs didn't seem well equipped in terms of training and informed to deal with um, uh, the materials that were in their possession. Do you, do you think these um, could have been dealt with uh, for the coming election? Oh, yes. Uh, you know, it's, it's a shame that INEC, who had put the calendar for this election, did not mobilize and train their ad hoc staff. You know, I, I remember, you know, interestingly, in some polling units, it's our own observer that had to uh, direct them on what they're meant to do and how to actually uh, deal with crowd control and, and what to actually do on the ground. But INEC had also, I know that they've undertook refresh our training to the ad hoc staff uh, across the country and we hope that they do better uh, on Saturday. So so yeah, we, we've, we've also experienced and acknowledged that this was a, a challenge and INEC has uh, put this training in place or refresh our training in place to, to overcome it. But, uh, and, and that's why we must hold INEC to account. 305 billion naira was given to INEC for these elections. And I think after the election, we need to take stock and audit how they use these funds uh, and why there were these gaps, even if they had the resources uh, with them. Hamza, the, the beavers remains uh, a big deal in this election and all thanks to the Electoral Act 2022. Now, as it stands, INEX says that the reconfiguration of the beavers machines should be completed today in preparation for the elections on Saturday. Some political parties who are aggrieved with the outcome of the results for the presidential election of February 25 are not very comfortable. They feel that some of the data they have might be missing. But INEC has said, don't you worry, your data will be there regardless. How do you see the workings of Beavers on Saturday uh, with regards to the elections proper on that day and some reservations expressed already by some presidential 
candidates in the last uh, election that held on February 25. You know, um, it's a game changer. Beavers is a game changer um, for um, this election. You know, Beavers is, is, is a total game changer. And when you look at, um, you know, how and, and you know there was also a study that was done the kenyan presidential election you know we were in kenya even the chairman led his own delegation to kenya and they actually saw the 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 play of the you know beavers in play and beavers actually is a game changer in our country and i can understand the apprehension of some political party who want access to beavers uh, to get data from it but we must also understand that these machines have backup system and as long as nobody interfere with the backup system that sometimes is even in the cloud, then there's no cause for alarm. And as long as, you know, INEC respect the rule of law and the courts uh, ruling to grant them access to it, then there should be no cause for alarm. All right, uh, Amzat, I think is the perfect place to end this conversation. Thank you so very much, Hamzat Lawal. Uh, the CEO Connected Africa will touch base with you again, hopefully, uh, before the uh, governorship election or maybe during the election. We'll probably have your input on the, pro the process uh, leading to the election. Thank you once again for your time. Well, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. All right, we'll go on a break. When we come back, we will stay on the conversation, the governorship and National Assembly elections. This time, we'll focus on INEX uh, preparation ahead of the coming polls. Stay with us. <laughs>